subscribe to bisbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories remember malaika arora dancing to this song on top of a running train what if she were to try catch a train in the latter part of april this year 240 passenger trains were cancelled in india in the last week of april to make way for 427 coal rakes that were given priority over passenger trains to enable supply to the 109 of the 204 power plants in the country that were running out of stock four of five 210 megawatt coal plants at tutikaran thermal power station had shut down as only 15000 tons of coal was in stock as against the 200000 needed meanwhile India was experiencing its fourth hottest April in 122 years. So hot that even forests were catching fire on their own steam, no pun intended, with 7800 forest fires across the country within a 3 day span. Not only are people across India affected with outages that last from a minimum of 1 hour to over 10 hours per day in many states, but as the priority is to supply electricity to cities out of the 427 available rakes only 100 were allotted to industries like steel and cement plants forcing them to work at below capacity official figures put the daily shortfall at 11 gigawatt but should they have been prepared for a spike in demand during summers the two years of covid saw a lull and now demand is back with a vengeance and expected to exceed 600 gigawatt daily by 2030 On the social front, 31 million homes remain to be lit, and electricity still has to reach the interiors of India. What happens to the situation then? So you will be happily surprised to learn that India has the capability to produce 400 gigawatt of electricity daily, even now, more than enough to meet the country's needs, even after taking into account losses of around 34% during transmission and through theft. and with both adani and amani getting into renewable energy together promising to produce over 145 gigawatt india will have no shortage of electricity so why is there a crisis if we can make enough the bottom line is that this crisis is one of logistics mismanagement and plain bad luck rather than insufficiency firstly on the logistics front the indian railways were caught napping Railways have a huge role to play in the delivery of coal to power plants, an activity that makes up 40% of its freight revenue. When freight demand was lower, they did not allocate enough rakes, and now they are scrambling. Daily, two million tons of coal are being dispatched via rail and road. In October 2021, there was a similar surge in electricity demand, leaving power plants with enough coal to last just four to five days. But the heat quickly dissipated, and a crisis was averted at the last minute. This time 72 and a half million tons was left lying in coal india's and sccl sheds and washery heads where on the other hand there was a shortage of 66 million tons at power plants a minimum of 17 to 24 days worth of stock must be available at any given time at thermal plants to avoid a crisis this has been going down of late however just like india is going through a power crisis what happens if you or your family goes through a medical crisis and are unprepared in terms of being properly insured and end up spending a vast amount of your savings therefore we would like to recommend ditto insurance promoted by the same people who created finshots and backed by zero da india's largest stock broker ditto will handhold you and explain about term insurance and medical insurance what is the right policy and premium that fits yours and your family's needs and you can do all this by simply calling their agents or texting them on whatsapp they will gladly help you along at no fee and no commitment no bombard you with spam calls and messages as they have a strict no spam policy click on the link provided in the description and book your appointment with their agent get yourself prepared for any medical emergency god forbid make sure your light is always on and shining now india has enough coal to last multiple centuries Coal is India's most abundant fossil fuel with total geological reserves of 344 billion tons. However, we are unable to get it out of the ground fast enough. The result is that India has had to turn to foreign sources of coal and has now become the second largest coal importer from 7% at the turn of the century to well over 20% now. And while it was cheap enough to buy from abroad at about $73 per ton for the past several years, 
It has spiked to over $200 since 2021 and to more than $300 after the Ukraine war, as Russia was a major supplier of the commodity. Already the price per unit of electricity in India is quite high and with coal prices quadrupling, it will result in further increases and inflationary trends in the country. High prices have made politicians resort to giving free power to consumers, which has led to discoms, distribution companies suffering heavy losses because state governments don't pay the discoms on time. The discoms are left with no money to clear dues of power generators, Genkos. Genkos in turn default on payments to Coal India, to whom they currently owe 12,300 crore. Coal India is left with no option but to reduce supply to Genkos with large outstandings, resulting in power outages. Therefore, much before this crisis and to adhere to the Paris Agreement, India had an alternative mega plan to generate 300 gigawatt, later enhanced to 450 gigawatt of electricity from renewable sources by 2030, of which solar alone would be 300 gigawatt. But the problems faced then with regard to storage of electricity in batteries have yet to be solved, making solar power an unreliable option as a source of continuous supply. So for at least the foreseeable future, India will have no option but to rely on coal which being the biggest source of carbon dioxide emissions will surely be a huge letdown for environmentalists. As it will also be for the women in Chhattisgarh's Hasdeo Aranya who recently started a tree-hugging campaign to save 2 lakh of them from being cut down for mining projects. However, nuclear energy, the one ace that can permanently supply India with an unlimited, reliable supply of cheap energy, finds no backers. Case in point is Shiv Sena's opposition to the 1650 megawatt nuclear plant at Jaitapur Ratnagiri for no concrete reason. If the project is so good, then any state in the country can take it and Maharashtra will buy power from it. The chief bone of contention is the compensation clause in case of a nuclear leak or accident. But one can learn from France who have been safely generating 70% of their energy needs from nuclear fission for over 50 years now. Unfortunately, the nuclear deal with America that Manmohan Singh staked his reputation on in 2008, if you don't let me sign the deal, I will resign, has resulted in nuclear power generation of just 6,780 megawatt, 2% of India's capacity, with some more under construction. However, the Modi government has plans to double the capacity by adding 9,000 megawatt, 9 gigawatt more. By 2024, we will have 12 new ones at 5 new sites. So what can India do to minimize damage from the looming coal crisis? Cut down the 20% loss of electricity during transmission and distribution to 12 to 15%. They plan to do this in a 3 trillion rupee discom reform scheme agreed to by many states by investing in more advanced transmission towers and lines, installation of smart meters at the customer's end and minimizing power theft. After privatization of discoms in Delhi, losses declined from 55% in 2002 to 7.5% in 2021, saving 1.2 lakh crore, reducing dues to zero. However, tackling the gangs of Vasepur Jharkhand's huge coal mafia that is estimated to control 20 to 50 percent of mining activity might prove a lot tougher. Bezbo's limerick: The scramble was on to get trains on track as India's power equation was going out of whack. But lo and behold, India has coal worth gold, but still not enough to avoid a heart attack. You will also find these sources listed in the video description section.